y'all. Today we're going to talk about the triangle inequality theorem. And basically what it says is the sum of the measures of any two sides of a triangle is greater than the measure of the third side. And it has to be greater. They cannot be equal. Greater. Not equal. And remember, sum means when you add them up, right? So the easy way to do this is just add the two smallest numbers and whatever you get has to be a number greater than the biggest number, okay? If it's not greater than the biggest number, then it can't possibly make a triangle, okay? So let's look at some examples. This is super easy. And the directions will be something like this. Determine if the three numbers can be measures of the sides of a triangle. So could these make a triangle? Let's find out. So we have five, seven, and four. So the two smallest numbers are five and four. You add them up. Five plus four equals nine. Then you ask yourself, is nine bigger than seven? Heck yeah. So can this be a triangle? Yes, it can totally be a triangle. Yes. Why can it be? Because nine is bigger than seven. You don't have to write all that. I'm just explaining it. All right, let's look at number two. What are the two smallest numbers? Three and seven. Add those bad boys up. Three plus seven equals 10. Then you ask yourselves, is 10 bigger than 11? No, 10 is not bigger than 11. So no, this cannot be a triangle because 10 is less than 11. It ain't happening. Those two little sides wouldn't be able to reach each other. They'd be like, ah, and they wouldn't meet. All right, let's look at this one. 16, 10, and five. So we have 10 and five are two smallest numbers. Add them up, 10 plus five is 15. Ask yourselves, is 15 bigger than 16? No, it is not. So no, this cannot be a triangle because 15 is less than 16 and it's got to be greater. Now let's look at this one. You have two 100s. So when I pick the two smallest numbers, I'm gonna use eight and one of these 100s. It doesn't matter which one, right? So 100 plus eight is 108. Is 108 bigger than 100? Yes, all day long. So, yes, it can totally be a triangle because 108 is greater than 100. And one more of these. We have 5, 8, and 3. The two least numbers are 5 and 3. Add them bad boys up. 5 plus 3 is 8. So, is 8 greater than 8? No, eight is not greater than eight. Eight is equal to eight. And remember, we said it can't be equal. It must be greater. So can this be a triangle? No, because eight equals eight. It's not greater. See how easy that was? All right. So let's move on to the next part. And what you need to be able to do is if I say, hey, there's this triangle and one side is this and the other side is that, what could the third side be? And this is how you figure that out. So we're finding the range of possible third side measures. So if X represents the possible lengths of the third side, all you have to do is this basic first grade math. You subtract the two numbers and it goes on this side of the compound inequality. And then you add the two numbers and it goes on this side of the compound inequality. You remember these compound inequalities, algebra ones, great, right? Note, no negative numbers up in here, okay? So you're always gonna subtract the small number from the big number. Um, side lengths can't be negative. I can't measure my table and get a negative number, so no negatives. So let's do this. It says, if two sides of a triangle have the following measures, find the range of possible measures for the third side. So when you do these, the first thing I would do is draw that hip happening compound inequality. Ka-chow, ka-chow, not the equal two parts, because remember, it can be equal, okay. So we subtract them. So 17 minus eight is nine. 
So nine goes here. And then you add them. 17 plus eight equals 25. So 25 goes here. And boom, that's my answer. It, it could be any number between nine and 25. For example, 9.2, 21. Anyhow. All right, let's look at the next one. We have 40 and 62. I'm gonna go ahead and draw that compound inequality. Ka-chow, ka-chow. What do we do first? We're gonna subtract them. So I'm gonna say 62 minus 40, and that would be 22. Boom. And then I'm gonna add them. So I'm gonna say 62 plus 40, and that would be 102. And I'm done, that's my answer. The third side could be any number between 22 and 102, like 50 or 100. All right, let's look at the next one, four and four. Well, we know that this would be what type of triangle since it has two sides that are same? Hmm, isosceles. All right, so draw my little compound inequality. I'm gonna subtract them. I feel like you can do this in your head, but I'll write it down. Four minus four is zero. And then add them. Four plus four is eight. So any number between zero and eight, for example, a half or 5.3. And one more like this, and then we're gonna look at a word problem. We have nine and 13, draw my compound inequality. We're gonna subtract them, 13 minus nine is four. So that is the number that goes on the left. And then I add them, 13 plus nine or nine plus 13, really doesn't matter. And we get 22. And that is my answer, that is the range. Any number between four and 22 like seven or 19.4. All right, let's look at this word problem here. This is easy, right? Wonderful. So, since you guys will be going to college one day, it says find the range of possible measures for the distance between Winthrop University and USC. All right. So here I have Union County High School, which we know is in Union, South Carolina, and it is 40 miles away from Winthrop University. I'd like to let you know I approximated those distances. And then we have um, the University of South Carolina, which is in Columbia, and that's about 75 miles. So we're gonna say 75. So how far could this be? What are the possible values? What is the range of values? And we know how to do this because we just did it. I'm gonna draw my compound inequality. First thing we're gonna do is subtract those bad mama jammas. So 75 minus 40 is 35. Boom shakalaka. And then I'm going to add them. I don't have room over here, so I'm gonna go down here. 75 plus 40 is 115. So the distance from Winthrop to USC is somewhere between 35 and 115 miles. Okay, I'm gonna write that out in words. The distance between Winthrop and USC is between, I use between twice, whoops, 35 miles and 115 miles. So it could be 50 miles. It could be 105 miles, but somewhere in between there. All right, you guys, that is it. I hope you have an awesome day.